Now we're going to take a look at uh, a passage in the Bible. Uh, it's in Luke chapter 12. Um, but before we do, let me just explain a little bit about what is going on. So um, as I mentioned, uh, we're having a gift day uh, today. We had one last week, and uh, we're incredibly grateful to people who gave uh, and who responded to God's promptings to give uh, towards our refurbishment of our, our building, which is going to be fantastic facility in Odium and a base for us for the future. And um, we're putting out the jar again today. And really what I would just want to say to adults and children alike is, you know, don't worry too much about the target that we're trying to reach. Let's just each be uh, open to whatever God is prompting us to give, and let's give according to the conscience that we feel uh, God is, uh, is speaking to us. There's a wonderful story in the Old Testament of um, a lady, uh, a widow, who has nothing, and she's going to starve, and she's going to die. And there's a guy called Elisha, and he's a prophet. And he goes to her, and he says, look, just get some jars, and uh, collect your jars, some jars from all the neighbors around you. And so he collects all these, she collects all these jars, and then they just start pouring oil out of one jar, and it just keeps multiplying and growing and growing. And then she fills jar after jar with olive oil. And then eventually, when she runs out of jars, the oil stops flowing. And I felt God just spoke to us and said, put the jar out today one more time, and, and, let, and let's pray that God fills that jar as we each respond to what he tells us to, to give. Um, now, first of all, can I just ask if I could have the mic down a teeny bit in the room, because I feel a bit boomy in the room. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure it's fine on the live stream. Um, but we're going to look at a parable that Jesus told, and we're going to look at a passage uh, that uh, Jesus uh, spoke to us. So before we do that, it's about money, and Jesus tells a parable. Does anybody know what a parable is? Could any of the children give me an answer? Cleo, what do you think? Hang on a minute. Let's just get the mic. What do you think a parable is? It's a story that Jesus told. A story that Jesus told. Brilliant. Exactly right. And what is the point of a parable? Anybody know? Zoe? Um, to tell us what, um, to tell us like what to do, um, if we were in that situation. Yes, to tell us what to do if we're in that situation. That's very good. One final thought: a parable. It's a story. Exactly right. You've got it. Oh, go on then, Rosie. It's um, something that um, you can tell someone about. Yes, that's right. So it's, it, it's a story that Jesus told, and it's got a meaning to it, all right? And we have to learn what the meaning of the story is. And so today, as we look at this parable, I'd like you to be thinking, what is the lesson that we can learn from this parable that Jesus told? And the parable is about money. Now, I'd be interested to know whether you guys get money. Uh, put your hands up if you get pocket money at any time. Yeah, okay. Put your hands up if you ever have to do a job at home to get a bit of extra money. Yes, okay, excellent. And then what do you do with your money? That's the question. If you get some money, I wonder what you actually do with it. Uh, let's see, what do you do? Let's have someone at the back here. Well, I usually spend it on something that I like or um, a new Bible so I can give it to people who... Um, want to come instead of like because so for example if you have a friend yeah. and they want to come to the church but they're saving their money on something that they want i'd buy them a bible so then they can uh, get the thing that they want wow this is what i love this is why i love working with kids that's a, such a great answer that's amazing so you save up and then you you buy and you do it for somebody else that's brilliant. Let's have one or two other answers. What do people do with their money? Adults, I'd like you to think as well. We'll do a little test in a minute. Let's have one more answer. Zoe, what do you do with your money? Um, I save it up um, until I've got enough to buy something I want. Yes. Okay, excellent. So you save it up. Delucci, what about you? Um, I help my mum buy something with my money. Oh, you help, you help uh, her buy something with your money. Excellent. Okay. 
Very good. Yeah, so um, we can, you know, let me have a little scale here, right? If, if on a scale of one to 10, adults as well, I want you to do this. If number one means that you always save your money, right? You never spend it. You just save, 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 save. And 10 is you just spend it just like that. You know, the moment it's in your hands, immediately you go and spend it. You never save, you just spend it all straight away. So one uh, is you always save. So let's have a go. Who does lots and lots of saving? One, put your hand up when we get to the number. Two, three, lots of people save. Interesting, four, five. Who does more spending? Six, seven, eight. Anybody a real big spender here? Nine. And if you adults, this is where marriages fall apart, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, ten. Anybody just a huge spender? Okay. Now, there are actually three things that we can do with our money. And for this, I need somebody to help me here. We have three jars here. I'd like somebody, please, to come and take the first uh, number out of the jar. So how about if we have Darina? Could you come and do this? Thank you. Take it out of the jar and let's have a look at what it says. Do you want to open it up and face it towards everybody so they can see the word? Spend. Thank you very much, Serena. Let's put that on there. So that's obviously the first thing we can do with our money is we can spend it. Who'd like to come and open this jar for us? Delucci. Thank you. If you come and get this, take it out of there. Open it up and point it towards the camera. It says, save. Okay, so we can save our money. All right, and what's the third thing we can do with our money? Let's have somewhere. Sophie, would you like to come and do, do it for us, please? Thank you. Lovely. What does it say? Do you see what it says? Give. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you very much. Let's put that there. Okay. So we can do those three things. Do you know, I'd say it's actually good to do all three of those things. Spending's fine. We need to spend money. We need to buy food. Sometimes we need to buy, get special things like maybe a holiday or something. So spending's what money's for. Uh, saving is a brilliant thing to do. When my, Kate and I were speaking to our youth group last week, we said one of the best things we ever did when we first got married was just to have a little thing where we saved up each month a certain, just a small amount. But over the years, it grows. It's good to save. It's a really good, wise idea. The Proverbs talk about saving, and that's a good, godly thing to do. And then giving, that's the third thing that we can do. And that's what we're partly going to see in the parable today. Giving is something that we can do. And that was a wonderful answer that we had from, uh, from Darina earlier on, I think it was, or no, so someone else earlier on, okay? Giving is a great thing to do and something that God calls us to do. It's a good test of our hearts if we're willing to give. So let's have a look at this parable. Now for this, we need some prompt cards because I need you all to help me with this. So let's have a little practice and see if we can just, because as we act out, we're going to uh, use these words, okay? So the first one is, ah, are you gonna help us with Janice? Yes, yeah. so we need your help. We can't do it by ourselves. It would be impossible. So can you all practice? How do you say this? Ah, and the next one, Lauren. Yay! Yay! Boo. And the last one, you don't say gasp, you just go, <gasps> okay, very good. I think you'll be brilliant at this. Over to you, Andy. Thank you. Well, Janice is going to read us our, the beginning of Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 13. So, one of the men in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, our father just died and left some things for us. Tell my brother to share them with me. But Jesus said to him, who said I should be your judge or decide how to divide your father's things between you two? Then Jesus said to them, be careful and guard against all kinds of greed. People do not get life from the many things they own. Right. Thank you very much, Janice. So let me explain what's going on here. OK, so what's happening is, has anybody been in a class where you've got this really annoying, pesky kid 
sitting in the corner, all right, and uh, then the teacher's teaching something really important. Let's say they're teaching uh, an important maths thing, or maybe a really important bit of history where you're learning about the world wars and horrible things that have happened, important lessons we need to learn, all right? And then Charlie in the corner sticks his hand up after this important point and goes, Miss, um, my hamster's ill. You think, were you even listening to what I was just talking about? I mean, how is that to do with what we were just talking about? Now, this is what happens with Jesus. Jesus is teaching in Luke chapter 12, and we read that he's teaching really important things about if anybody disowns him, then God will disown them in heaven, and all these really important things Jesus is teaching about. And then this man sticks his hand up and goes, Jesus, can you tell my brother to share with me? Where did that come from? Okay, this man, he is really annoyed because uh, he's got some inheritance money, some money from his dad, okay? And he's got this money, and he's supposed to share it with his brother, but he's not sharing it. He's keeping it all for himself. He's being greedy. And it's amazing, isn't it, how people can fall out over money, especially in families. It's a really sad thing to see. And this is what's happening. We've got these two brothers who are fighting because one of them won't share his half of the inheritance with the other brother. And Jesus says, look, I'm not going to get involved in your family argument. That's what I'm not come to do. But let me teach you something really important about money. And he says, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Right? What he means there is this. It doesn't really matter how much stuff you've got. That doesn't make you a more valuable person or having less stuff, a less valuable person. Life is much more than stuff and money. You can have a really rich person who is incredibly miserable, and you can have a really poor person who is incredibly joyful. Money helps, but life is not in the end about money, and it's not the case that whoever dies with the most toys wins, okay? Whoever has the most stuff is somehow better than everybody else. Everybody is equally valuable, and there's more to life than money. Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these other things will be added, Jesus says, at another place. So then, having said this, Jesus then teaches a parable. And for this parable, I'm going to need a little bit of assistance. Uh, and I'm hoping that, ah, there you are, Josh. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Um, I'm okay, but I'm just a little bit tired. Yeah, I have to be honest, I, I don't want to be rude yeah. or anything, but you do look really pretty fed up and miserable. I mean, it doesn't look like you've washed your hair Thanks, for, for, for months. Yeah, and so much, so busy. Really? Being a farmer, I haven't even had time to shower and wash my hair. No, I'm just so busy oh. and so tired. That's, oh, that's so sad. Oh, yeah. no, I'm sorry to hear that. Is it... Is it tough then? You're a farmer, did you say? Yeah, I'm a farmer. So we have to get up like really early, like four o'clock in the morning. We work all the way until four o'clock, until the evening, whatever that is. And we just, yeah, it's so tiring and so busy, but yeah. Wow, that, yeah. That's, that's, that's really tough. I mean, I know a few farmers. We've got some really great farmers in our church and, and you watched Jeremy Clarkson the other day. Mm. It, it looks like it's really hard work. Yeah. It, it must be really tough then. It's pretty tough. Yeah, but it's, it's fun. I'm, I'm trying to save up a bit of money, you see, so I'm kind of enjoying it, yeah. Are you trying to save up some money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, well, that's a really good thing to do, you know, saving. Yay! <laughs> saving is an excellent thing to do. Saving money is a great thing to do. And you know what? Maybe you'll get a reward in the end for all your hard work. I tell you what. I tell you what, how about if you pray to God, I'll say a prayer as well to God for you, that maybe this year you'll have an excellent harvest and then all your hard work would be rewarded. It would be good, wouldn't it, if you yeah. could get some reward for all your yeah, hard work. thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll be praying too. And I'm, so far we've had a pretty good, you know, nice lot yeah. of rain and sun. Yeah. So, you know, it's looking hopeful, but I'd best, you know, get back to it because it's quite a lot of work. So I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Later, later. See you. Bye, 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 bye. Good to see you. Okay, Josh, thanks. Uh, well done, well done. Uh, hope he works hard. Um, 
That's right. So it's really hard work uh, being a farmer and uh, working hard to earn your money. And that's what happens. Let's have our reading. We've got a reading some, from someone, haven't we, from the parable. Zoe, can you read for us? Would you like to stand up and turn this way? Is that okay? Since you're nice and confident. Great. Then Jesus used this story. There was a rich man who had some land. His land grew a very good crop of food. He thought to himself, what will I do? I have no place to keep all my crops. Then he said, I know what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger barns. I will put all my wheat and good things together in my new barns. Then I can say to myself, I have many good things stored. I have saved enough for many years. Rest, eat, drink and enjoy life. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Zoe. So, so this farmer had a really good heart. Hey, 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 yes, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, is that Josh? Yeah, man. It's me. I look. can't recognise you. you look, yeah. Wow, you look completely yeah. different. Are you? Uh, you're looking great. You're looking happy. You're yeah, looking... Well, you wouldn't believe it, Andy. I've had really? What's the, the best summer ever. Really? The best summer. Have you? Yeah. Why? What happened? Well, the, the rain poured more. The sun shone more, and I had so much grain to sell that I just got so much money. And I was rich. Wow. Yeah, but also, I won the lottery. Joking. Yeah, really? I'm like so amazing. I won the lottery, so now I literally have millions. Well, I, I, I don't want to say that the lottery is a good idea, to be honest with you, but nevertheless. Well, I have millions now. I mean, you still must be very grateful. You must be. You must be so happy. You must be so grateful to God. Do you remember we said a prayer that God would help you with your harvest and things? Yeah, so, not really. I think I earned all my money myself, to be honest. Like I put the work in the fields, so you know, my money, yeah. What? Don't even, don't even need God anymore. Mm. He's kind of like behind. Really? I mean, yeah. Yeah, but we, we prayed to God that he would give you a harvest. It's, he, it's him that gives us the ability to earn money and to earn wealth. It's all his in the end, you realize. Yeah, but it didn't really feel like that. So yeah, it's mine. Boo. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, I tell you what, at least, at, le at least you can now give some money away to people who need it and uh, to the poor. There's a lot of need in the world. Nah. You know? What? Really? Nah, it's all mine. They don't need it. They need to just, you know, get their own money. This is my money. I'll just keep it. Huh? Yeah. Boo. My money. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's really sad. I mean... He used to be such a nice guy. He used to be really humble. And, actually, and you know what? Kind. I'm just going to sit here and book myself a holiday because I'm so rich now. And you continue and I'll just chill. Chill? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can just go ahead. I mean, yeah. it's really sad. I, he used to be such a nice guy. He used to be so humble. He used to, he used to trust God for things. And oh, sad, isn't it? When money gets to people's head like that and... Uh, well, look, let's see what Jesus had to say at this point in the parable, because it says in Luke chapter 12, verse 20, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get, uh, Josh, <sighs> are you all right? Hello, anybody? Hey, hey, excuse me. Uh, no, 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 nothing going on. Oh, no. Well, that's what Jesus said happened in the parable. Uh, eh, okay, I'll tell you what, you can wake up now, Josh. Thank you. Good acting. Good acting. Okay. Uh, Jesus said, Jesus said, uh, you know, what will happen to all your belongings uh, when it eventually comes to the end? You know, what will happen to it all? And then Jesus said, this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. So Jesus is saying, if you just store it up for yourself, and you're not rich towards God, uh, then it might not really uh, end up getting a lot of reward from that. So that was the parable. Thank you very much, Josh. Would you like to stay there? I think he looks good sitting on his chair. Uh, what lessons can we learn from that parable? Anybody got any thoughts about lessons that Jesus wanted us to learn from that parable? Let's see if we can get some. Go on, Florence. You can do it. Um, 
So if you store up stuff in the world, it won't give you any rich stuff in heaven. Yeah, okay, if you just store it, yeah. Actually, we can invest in, in the future, in, in heaven, by, by giving now, because actually there's a reward from that. That's an excellent answer. Yeah, interesting. Delucci, what do you think? That God wants us to give to others when we have a lot of it and they have none. That's excellent as well. Thank you. God wants us to give to others when he gives things to us. That's right. That's absolutely right. He gives it to us and he wants us to be generous with it. Let's have a chimney. Let's have a couple more answers. What do you think? God um, will not be mean to us because he wants us to live in peace. Yes. Interesting. Well done. And Sophie, let's have... That you should be like grateful for like what you have and like that um like other people aren't that wealthy as you and they could be homeless and stuff, so you should be grateful for what you have. That is very good as well. That is excellent. She's coming up with some great answers today, isn't she, Janice? Okay. And great gratitude, that's a really good thing. Gratitude for even the small things that we have, the things we get to enjoy. So one more answer. I think we had Zoe here who had a hand up. Um, like, it doesn't matter how much money you have, because um, mm -hmm. it matters if you have God, because if you have no money, if you've got God, then it doesn't matter. Well done. That's excellent answers. Well done, everybody. Yeah, just think about this for a minute. And um, what is the lesson? Well, one of them is exactly what you just said. Our value is not about how much stuff we have. You can be rich and God loves you. You can be poor and God loves you. You can be uh, a boy or a girl and God equally loves you. You can be any color or any, any race and God loves everybody equally. You might look at yourself and think, look at yourself in the mirror and think, oh, I don't know, I don't really like myself. Well, God made you in his image and you are valuable as a person because he made you especially. He made you fearfully. He made you wonderfully. And he wants you to know him and to be his follower. So you are valuable in yourself. But Jesus is also teaching us, isn't he, in this parable that uh, actually we need to understand that money is a gift that we can have from God and it's a great servant but it's not a great master and money is something that God wants us to handle wisely and carefully and in a way that is godly and honoring to him. Do you know Jesus actually spoke more about money to people than about many other subjects I mean, I don't like really speaking about money, to be honest. It's very rare that I do. It's, the last two weeks have been the only time I've done it in years, really. Um, but Jesus actually did speak about it a lot. Who remembers the story of the widow? Uh, this poor old lady, and there she is, and she goes up to the temple, and everybody's putting their money into the offering. And there's some rich people, and they're just putting a few coins in. Uh, so it's not really a big part of how much they own that they're giving. And then this widow who hardly has anything, she puts everything she's got, although it's only a few pennies, she puts it all in the offering. And Jesus, it says Jesus is watching. Can you imagine? Jesus is sitting there and he's watching people giving. Nobody else knows really necessarily how much you give. I have no idea how much people give in the church, I'd never want to know. I, I leave that to the treasurer to know. But Jesus is actually watching us. He does know. And he's watching this widow and she gives so much. And Jesus honors her. Jesus says what she gave is more valuable than the little bits that the rich people gave. Because it doesn't matter how much you give, it's whether it's worship that's what's important. It's whether you're doing it because you really want to give something meaningful to God out of your life that maybe even hurts a bit because you want it to be an act of worship to God. That's what really matters. And, you know, 
Jesus honors this woman, this widow, because of what she does. And you know, if we honor God with our money, then God will honor us and take care of us as well. The Bible says, do not worry about money. Don't worry about your food. Don't worry about your clothes because God knows what you need. And if he's able to clothe the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, then he's able to clothe us and to look after us. If we put him first in our hearts, if we're rich towards God, as Jesus said, then he will look after us. Do you know, I've never heard a story of somebody giving to God or giving to help a poor person or giving to the church. I've never heard a, a story of a person who regretted giving or felt that somehow that well, after they gave, they didn't have enough money. I have heard lots of stories of people who've been on the adventure of giving for God, and then God's done some miracles in their lives and provided for them. And that's true. I mean, my wife and I can tell you some great stories of times when we gave something, and then God surprised us and looked after us and provided for us. He's never let us down, and he'll never let you down if you put him first with everything you've got. As we've been singing and reading today, love the Lord your God with all your heart. It starts in your heart, with all your mind, with all your being, with everything, with everything you have. Love God. Martin Luther said that there's almost three conversions we need, three things that need to change in our hearts. First of all, we need a conversion of the heart, then, or first of the head, where we need to believe in Jesus, then in the heart, and then with our wallets. And often, it's what we do with our money that is a real test of whether we've really been changed in our hearts and minds as well, okay? So I'm not here to tell you, kids, that you have to give all your money away, okay? We're allowed to save. It's a good idea to save. We're allowed to spend. We're allowed to enjoy money as well, okay? It's a gift from God. It's, it's there to be enjoyed. But he doesn't want us to make money the thing that we're living for. He wants us to make him the person that we are living for. Do you agree? Is that good? Yeah? Okay, let's watch a quick video to summarize what we've just heard, and then we'll respond. <laughs> The field of a rich man Hello. gave much grain. Did I do that? Obviously not. It was God. You think? So now, what will you do with your newfound wealth? Your workers could really use a bonus and... Hmm, what will I do? I don't have enough room in my old barn to store all my grain. <laughs> Exactly. You know, there are many needy in the area who would really appreciate... I know what I'll do. Yes? I'll tear down my old barn... ...and build bigger ones. Okay. all my grain and goods stored up in my new barns. The rich man said to himself, My friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, You are a fool. Huh? You will die this very night. Then we will get everything you worked for. Life, Jesus says, is more than things 
It doesn't really matter how few or how many things you have. What really counts is love and joy and true happiness in your heart. And the greatest of all riches, the most valuable thing in the world that you can possibly have is Jesus. So let's just say a prayer, shall we, before we uh, finish with our final song. And then this is our chance to actually take up an offering as well as we sing this last song. So let's pray. Shall we just concentrate and pray? Lord, thank you that the most valuable thing that we can have in life is Jesus. Lord, we pray that we will put you first in our minds, in our hearts, and in our lives. May this be our worship, living for you. We give ourselves to you again today. Perhaps we may never have given ourselves to you, and if maybe any of you children have never done that, right now in your, in your heart, you could just tell God that you want to be his. Maybe there's adults here that just need to say, okay, God, here I am. Everything I have is yours. Everything I am is yours. I give my life to you. I want to follow you. I want to have your joy in my life. I surrender everything to you, Lord. I don't want to hold on to things that are stopping me from following you. I want to be a foolish person. I want to be wise. I want to live for you. So Lord, today, accept our offering of praise. As we sing, we're praising you, but as we live and as we give to others and to you, we're worshiping you in a way that you find acceptable, that you rejoice in. And so we Offer ourselves again to you in Jesus' name. Amen.